Hey humans, I'm Batsy. Have you ever woken up from your drowning bed and thought, you know what my base is missing? A farm with trees that grow underwater for an excess of logs that I don't need. No, just me. Since the start of this underwater project, I thought that making a functional tree farm underwater sounds like a really silly but funny idea. And to clarify one thing about it, I actually mean properly underwater, not building an air pocket for the farm or anything like that. I do have a couple of ideas on how is this going to work. I have done some testing on the side to find out if it was any close to viable. The three main concepts that I know for sure so far are the following. It needs to use the tree fertilizer. That will force trees to spawn regardless of the conditions, even underwater, which sounds like the only somewhat viable option thus far. Then there is the problem of the water itself. The sapling needs to be planted somewhere that doesn't have water, otherwise it will float away the second it gets planted. The last thing is that we will likely need to put the mechanical saws on a contraption otherwise the logs will go everywhere and that will make it impossible to gather the products. So with those concepts in mind, let's move to the creative dimension of the SMP and figure out how exactly to solve each one of those problems because this is gonna be quite a silly project to tackle. The first issue I want to deal with is the problem with waterproofing the area where the sapling goes. Here is the deal. We can fully encase a sapling, holding it in an air pocket. Then just use the tree fertilizer to force it to grow, which will break the block above, but will essentially form a tree underwater. Awesome. Now, what do we put on top that can both be destroyed by the tree and replaced for the next sapling? The first thing that came to mind was just using a cobble generator. That way we can produce a block that will hold the water, and it doesn't matter if it gets destroyed, we can always produce infinite of them. I did get a couple of suggestions from my supporters. One was to use honey or other fluids, but water always seemed to take priority, and I couldn't figure out a way to prevent that. The other one was to use a piston that is constantly firing, which I think it's a decent solution to. Even if the piston moves the log, it will still get chopped down by the mechanical saw. In the end, I'm going for the idea of the cobble generator because I think the pipes are going to look amazing. And speaking of pipes, let's start making the design because I have a solid plan on how to build this part. I want to make it somewhat compact, for no real reason other than it usually becomes a harder challenge, but also more enjoying. So my idea is, right now we could have rows of trees with a three gap between them, but we can also use some casings in the middle, remove all of the excess pipes from the sides, and now we have a nice main line that goes to both sides, and it's only a gap of a single block. Highly unnecessary? Yes, very much so but that's how we do it in this channel. And to be honest though, doesn't this look amazing? It reminds me of an irrigation system, which is really on theme with this farm. Well, except for the lava part, I guess, but still. Everything is well in case now, so we can start to figure out how to plant the saplings in the middle of it, and what better way than just throwing on some deploys on it. Now we just need to test if the middle sections are actually air pockets for the saplings or not. Oh, it's one block too low. Oops. I mean, of course I knew that. I was testing you all. All right, now for real, this should work out. Yes, awesome, that's one step done. I have been staring at this for a hot second and I'm starting to wonder, how are we going to fertilize those saplings? Let me give some context. The idea is to stack a few of those together, so I don't really wanna be adding sideways deployers if I can avoid it. That means that whatever it is, it needs to be done within this space. 
We can't really use a deployer between all of these saplings. It's too short or too long. Imagine we place a deployer in here. That's going to affect two blocks in front. No less, no more. So that's never going to fit. A dispenser is useless too. Yes, adding some bone meal on it is going to do what we would expect. But the moment we add fertilizer to it, it simply doesn't know what to do. So that doesn't work either. Can't be done from above and can't be done from the sides. This might sound ridiculous, but can it be done from below again? I mean, we already have a deployer there. How hard can it be? All right, I have managed to somewhat make it work, but not really. The first thing to notice is that adding the fertilizer from an angle with a side belt seems to take priority, and that forces the input to be a perfect mix of both. That's something I actually didn't know. I never really tried to have a 50-50 distribution of inputs on the same belt before. This also works perfectly with my idea of having those items cycle through the deployer. So that is the good news. The bad news is that I don't really have any room to move items to the next deployer. Placing a single funnel already uses the entire space, so that doesn't work. And I tried with a hopper underneath to move it forward, but the hopper turned out to be a lot slower than the rest of the system, so that didn't work either. I seem to be at a bit of an impasse here. Not sure how to continue. Wait, hold on. That's it. The silly temporal fix is the actual solution. Well, that was a lot easier than I was making it to be. I keep forgetting about diagonal belts for some reason. Anyway, sweet. It's cycling through both of them. This section is pretty much done. Now I need to repeat the same on the farm itself and try to not break anything in the process. A few minutes later. Alrighty, I'm done adding the first test section. This will obviously not be in here. It's leaving no room for the rest, but I'm at the part that I'm tweaking around the timings a little bit. I have noticed that sometimes the deploys don't have enough time to use the item before it moves forward. So I'm trying to see if locking the chutes, the deployers, or both makes any difference in this setup. You can notice how all of the trees in this section are already fully grown, so it obviously works, eventually anyway. It will be a matter of just polishing those timings a bit further. Okay, well, that aside, I'm thinking about using a vault to store both saplings and fertilizer. It should make things easier, and I can probably use a single vault for both. We are not really going to need a million saplings anyway. So that's gonna be the next step. I'm going to see how many more rows I wanna add to this. I'm thinking at least double what we have now, maybe more. And once that is done, I will see how I go about storing things out. And about chopping down the actual trees too. That shouldn't be too hard to deal with. Alright, that wasn't too bad in the end. I have made some adjustments to my original idea, but I'm very pleased with the design so far. We don't need those anymore. I came up with better solutions. I'm really happy with it, looks very cool. The first addition I made is the vaults, two of them to handle the belts a bit better. It's doing the exact same idea as before, just a bit more convoluted, and it obviously allows to squeeze more belts in a narrower space. As for the timings, I ended up using a single link at the very end. I figured this was enough to make the entire row backlog. Instead of locking the deploya or something, it simply fills the entire row, 
so the items can't go any further. The timing is adjusted so it gives enough time to the deployer to use the item. The best part is that these timings are enough to do the same for the rest of them. In the end, doing the most simple thing was also the best way. The clock to make it work is a very simple design that I have been using on my farms for quite some time now. Essentially, we have two extenders, one set to normal mode and the second one inverted. For the sake of this example, and to not make it too complicated, I'm reversing the left one, but there are other things that can be done with it. Regardless, the idea is to set on the right extender for how long we want the circuit to be active and on the left for how long we want the circuit to be offline. That obviously can be adjusted to our needs. Extenders go up to an hour, so there is plenty of range to adjust our farms. The next thing to deal with is the storage and logistics. I'm using a barrel while I test, but the idea is to hook it up with the main vaults and also have a secondary storage for the logs and all of that. But this design is enough to get me started, so I'm going to move to the SMP, import the schematic, and figure out how exactly I want to do the finishing touches. Several hours later. That took a bit longer than I thought it would, but other than to polish some timings, the farm is pretty much operational. It's honestly looking pretty wicked, I love this farm. But let's check on the new additions first. I used Tom's storage to connect the farm with the main storage system and also to loop it back to the vaults of the farm. I honestly tend to forget I have Tom's in the server, and I also tend to forget that I wanted to force myself to use Tom's more often, but then I made an entire farm without it, so let's ignore that fact for a moment. What matters is that all of the items will get gathered at the end of the line to go back to the main vault. That's thanks to the filtered connector which allows to set the priority to high. All of the excess items will simply go into the main storage system, which includes all of the wood, apples, and so on. I also found a little trick that it's as obvious as it gets. I just never thought of it. The water wheel needs only one side with flowing water to work, which is very well known. What never crossed my mind is that obviously, everything else can be fully submerged. It doesn't really matter as long as one of the sides is working. It's super obvious, I just never gave it a thought, and it honestly looks super cool, doesn't it? I personally love that corner of the farm. I didn't show the gathering system, but it's basically a cart with a bunch of mechanical saws attached to it, that's pretty much it. It does have a little circuit to work properly though, let's check that out. The first circuit is what we have seen before, to control the chute at the end of the line. The second circuit is about the same, but on a much longer clock, and it's also added to a different extender to adjust things independently. This might not be the exact timings I will be using for the final product, but so far they are good enough for testing. This will basically cycle the mechanical saws every now and then and chop down the trees. The last thing to mention is why is there a lava generator in the farm to begin with, the cobble generator shouldn't be consuming the lava. Well, the issue is that at the current speed, yes, the pumps will likely not consume the lava, but it will take way too long to reach the end of the line. You can see how many days it takes to generate some cobble again. Any second we aren't blocking the water means that saplings will get wasted in that station. Running it at max speed has a much higher chance of consuming the lava before the cobblestone appears, so I added a bunch of cauldrons to keep generating new lava and thus keep up with the consumption. But let's see how it's working now, since that's why we are here. Some deployers are still acting weirdly. I need to adjust the timings further, but this honestly looks super cool. I could stare at it all day long. To be honest, even if half of them don't work properly, this is still producing a lot more wood than I will ever need. Though to be fair, taking into account that I didn't need wood in the first place makes this entire video a bit questionable. But let's be honest, this looks so amazing, does it not? There are many things that could be improved. Starting by not making the farm unnecessarily narrow to work with and probably not even bothering with the same deployer doing everything for us. But I love it. 
This is such a cool farm. Holy cow, look at this massive tree though. Never mind, it's gone. I keep noticing that saplings are still floating away, which is probably because of the deployers spamming saplings when there is still water in there. I'm gonna have to improve the cobble generation, so it blocks much faster, and also the timings of the mechanical saws and everything. We need to make sure that there is zero water coming in at all times. I sped up the pumps, but the very last one is still spamming saplings when there is water in there, so they are getting all wasted. This cobble needs to be much faster, or the deployer slower. Okay, so I added a secondary pipe in the middle that will move the lava to the other side. In theory, only the middle part should take longer to generate cobble. The biggest issue was the opposite corner so in theory, this should reduce the amount of wasted saplings. All right, that immediately feels better. I don't see saplings floating around anymore. Okay, I see one there, but it's a lot less frequent than it was. Both the saplings and the wood are definitely going up. I'm pretty sure I was at 6k logs a moment ago. I will go decorate this thing so it looks a bit cooler, and while I'm at it, I'm going to see if I can polish those timings a bit further. Right now it's over sustaining the saplings, but I rather have it as close to max efficiency as I can, even if the design in itself is rather silly. I have some funny ideas, so I hope this farm ends up looking pretty cool. Several days later. Well, the farm is still looking exactly as it was before. Between editing everything I have done so far, a few doctor appointments, and several other real-life things that I had this week, I pretty much ran out of time. I think I'm going to try to have it done before I start with the new episode. And speaking of which, I had an idea of my next project, or at least one of my next projects. And I could use some opinions on it. Right now, this space is a bit laggy. That is entirely my fault, because every farm I make, I oversize them and there are just too many fishing rods and things going on. I don't want to abandon this underwater project either, so I had this idea. Why not leave this as the industrial district and keep adding more laggy stuff to it so that it doesn't need to be on screen all the time? Then just build a different town somewhere else with my actual base. I feel like I derailed a bit from my main goal this season, which was to interconnect everything in my base and make the redstone as smart as I can make it. But I got so sidetracked doing other stuff and oversizing farms that I forgot my original idea. I still love this area, by the way, but I'm starting to love it more as an industrial area than as a base I want to live in. I mean, I, I don't even have a bedroom. So what do you all think? keep this as an industrial district and make a new base, or keep expanding here and see where it leads. I will keep an eye on those comments. For now, this will have to be it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.